The question that I also thought it was gonna um, was gonna pop up this afternoon is: uh, Does anybody here, in any strong sense, think that consciousness is an illusion? And what do they mean by that? Is what an illusion? Uh, well, right. So, what do you mean by that? Right. The question is: uh, Who's deluded? I think it's an illusion in the sense that it isn't what everybody thinks it is. I don't think it, I mean, it, there's a reality of consciousness. It's like, to me, it's an illusion in the same sense as free will. It's Could you not, elaborate on that? Um, because I don't There is no me in the brain that's uh, so aware and I, the, the kind of philosophical terror of it. <laughs> yeah, is, no, that's fine. I mean, that, that, to figure out that, that our consciousness is simply an epiphenomenon, albeit one that might have been put there by natural selection of a coalition of neurons that we have that makes us feel that there is an agent inside our Why epiphenomenon as opposed to phenomenon? Mm -hmm. Well, it could be. Uh, is it super okay, phenomenon. I mean, yeah. It you, could you, be, but it could be. I mean, you mean it's epiphenomenon in the, in the legitimate sense, not in the philosophical sense, which is a non-star. Well, that's what I wanted to actually figure out because no, I think that's this is important distinction here. If we if we agree that it's a phenomenon, so for instance, let me let me try to clarify where I was going with this. So I've heard, not from people in this room, but the, the argument that, oh, well, we know that consciousness is an illusion because if you look at split brain patients, they have, you know, sort of multiple and conflicting uh, sort of desires and all that sort of stuff. To me, that shows nothing of the sort. It simply shows that when the brain doesn't work properly, as natural selection intended, so to speak, uh, then you get interesting phenomena, you know, the, uh, uh, interesting phenomena of that sort, but it's a non-functional brain. It's a malfunctioning brain. But, but look, so it doesn't, hold on, let me finish. you're having a dream, you also don't know what's going on. There's parts of your brain that sure. are surprising other parts of your sure, brain. Sure, 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 sure. So yeah, I don't think you have to go to non-functional to say that. Okay, but, but what, I'm say what I'm saying is that it seems to me, especially from a naturalistic, purely naturalistic perspective, that we don't need to do anything like denying consciousness in any, you know, let's say the consciousness is an illusion in any strong sense of the word. All we need to say is, yeah, of course it, it comes out of parts underlying it, just like the functioning of a car comes out of parts underlying it, and if you break the steering wheel, it's not gonna work anymore. It's gonna do something bizarre, right? You don't want to say that the, the car going straight is an illusion because when, when you take the wheels apart, it doesn't happen anymore, right? So yes, it's made of parts. It's an emergent property in the weak sense in, in this case, or an epiphenomenal in the strong sense. I don't know which way you wanna go. I think a phenomenon, it's, it's probably better. So that's what I wanted to know, if, if people actually in this room agree with that as opposed to sort of what I sometimes think of as a facile, oh, the split brain shows that it's all an illusion, therefore there's no me. Well, there is you in an interesting uh, sense of you, uh, biologically, evolutionarily, uh, in terms of decision-making and moral responsibility, if you want to go back to the earlier discussion. But of course that you comes out of pieces that interact in certain ways, and the, the job of neurobiologists, among other things, is to figure out how exactly these pieces interact to yield let's add, you. Let's add, if you want, we want to talk about this me and you business. Um, that, that, <laughs> Not too much, but yeah. <laughs> so, the, my, my, the existence of me, this, this self that is so important to me, um, <clears throat> crucially, I need stuff besides what's in my brain for that, right? I have to build a whole bunch of, uh, I have to hang a bunch of scaffolding out in the environment, right, to keep myself on track and to keep, to be able to sort of re-identify myself and remind myself of the constraints that I'm trying to, to respect. And I also need other people to um, give me feedback that tells me that I'm staying on track and so on and so on. Right? So, so the, we get into all, when we're talking, once we're dealing with the self, we invite all sorts of, of pseudo problems and we also invite lots of really naive eliminativism from neuroscientists Agreed. by thinking, but by, by, by trying to get that whole self inside the, inside the um, skull cavity.